NF configurator is very thoughtful. It gives you the information why it cannot arm right on the first page on the setup page. There is a table called pre-arming checks and uh, a lot of green marks if everything is all right or some red marks when for given reason enough did not allow you to arm. The, the most important ones are this enough is leveled. You cannot arm enough if this not is not leveled. You see, I'm just tilting my UAV and as soon as it's more or less leveled, then it's green. If it's red, that means it's too much tilted to a side. You cannot arm. Is it good? Very good. Because if you would be able to arm on a very strange position, for example, like this, what would happen? Fly away, probably a crash and things like that. Next one, actually two, is compass calibrated and accelerometer calibrated. If your UAV has a compass or if your UAV has an accelerometer and every, almost everyone has it, then INAF requires you to calibrate those sensors. Why? Because A, without calibrated, properly calibrated accelerometer, INAF will not be able to do position halt, return to home and all GPS assisted mode because it's not only about GPS it's also about acceleration and possibility to compute the position from the acceleration that's why uh, almost every time well no well, not almost every time you flash the INAV into a new board you have to do accelerometer calibration advanced accelerometer calibration the link should be right now visible above and if you have a compass, you also have to calibrate compass. When the boat marks will be green, then this is not a problem. Next one with which people seems to have a problem is the one called navigation is safe. Why this is a problem? Because under navigation is safe, there are at least few problems. First of all, if you have a GPS, and you see I have a GPS, it's blue, it's working, then to be able to arm, you have to have a good and solid three-dimensional GPS signal lock. That means INAV has to, not INAV, GPS has to see at least six satellites and have a good position based on at least those six satellites. Right now it says zero because I'm indoor, I cannot arm, navigation is not safe. There is an override to do it, but please, please don't. It's not really worth it. So when this will change into at least six number of sats visible, then I should be able to arm. But this is tricky. Like I said, this is not the only reason. The second reason you might not be able to arm lies here in the mode tab. Why? Because INAV will not let you arm if any of the navigation modes is active. If NAV post hold, NAV RTH, NAV waypoints or GCS NAV or what, there we, what else do we have there? Or well, I think that's all. If any of the GPS modes is active, you cannot arm. It might sound strange that INAF requires this, but there's a very good reason. Imagine what will happen if you will arm in the moment when you have a not so good GPS fix. And then you arm and instantaneously, a second later, the GPS fix got better or even worse and the position got shifted. INAF would probably, well, INAF, no. UAV would probably crash trying to correct position while still being on the ground. That's why, as a, just as a security, you cannot arm when you are in any of the GPS assisted modes, but immediately after, long, after arming on your own responsibility, you can enable this. But it's really, it's better to be at least one meter above the ground before enabling post hold and alt hold. 
the remaining three reasons why INAV did not armed are strictly hardware based. Uh, first of all, it's runtime calibration. Usually this will be green all the time, as long as your sensor is not somehow damaged. If I, for example, once had a barometer that was giving absolutely random readouts uh, during the calibration phase uh, that happens uh, on every startup. Sometimes it was able to arm, sometimes it was not able to arm just because the barometer readouts were very noisy. This, this reason, runtime calibration, is the first information for you that something is wrong with your hardware. Check your readings, for example, using sensors. I will not do it right now. Next, the CPU load. If CPU load is too high, that means probably your loop time is too fast or you do too many modes or filtering or stuff like that on old hardware. For example, F1 or F3 flight controllers. CPU load has to be in a reasonable, reasonably low level. Right now, I have CPU load around 6%, no problems if this value would go up, for example, after increasing or no, decreasing the loop time, I might have problem arming because of the CPU load. And the last hardware reason is hardware health. It's red. Why it's red? because INAV is reporting my barometer not functional. Why it's not functional? Because I've broken it. Okay, maybe not broken it, but here in the configuration, I've chosen the wrong hardware. It should be, well, which one should it be? I think it should be MS5611. After I will reboot, give it a second. Oh, it's beeping so loud. After reboot, oh, Barrow is still red, so I still cannot arm. So maybe it was BMP 280. Hmm. Let's give it one more try. Yes. And now it's blue. That means the barometer was correctly discovered and calibrated. Hardware health is green and I'm ready to arm. So that's all for today. Stay tuned because in next episodes, I will tell you more about potential problems you might hit while running INAV. Um, probably mostly hardware related because probably in the next episode, I will be talking about I2C bus and why your magnetometer is not working. Until then, take care. Bye.